podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you, who invite you to join them in supporting UNCTV. As the state and national legislative branches of government prepare for their new sessions, questions remain as to how current public policy related to budgets, health care, and other issues will be addressed. Shannon Vickery recently spoke with Hotting Carter III to get his insights on how the sessions may unfold and how education could have a key role. Hiding Carter, welcome to North Carolina Now. Great to be here, thanks. You are a professor of leadership and public policy at UNC Chapel Hill. We have certainly seen a lot of interesting developments in the public policy realm over the last six months. As we start a new session of Congress, what are some of the big issues and trends that you are following right now? And how do you describe this political landscape? The political landscape can best be described as volatile beyond belief, and it has been for some time. Uh, the people every two years seem to change their mind about what they're looking for uh, and have done that some regularly for some time. They have now said fairly clearly that they want tighter control over spending, and they want to uh, been almost as clear that they want the presidency reined in. They're not actually too clear, and this is what's going to be tricky for the new majority in the House particularly, they're not actually that clear about what they really want cut. Mm -hmm. They certainly don't want things cut that affect each of their interests directly. Uh, so already uh, one of the problems for the Republicans is they have to look up and say, what do you mean we promised to cut $100 billion? Actually, <coughs> that's what we intend to do, because they can't find the money. They can't find the places where you can actually make that kind of a cut in programs that won't get you politically lynched. I'd look for that, how they work their way around their promises, which were very clear uh, in large terms, uh, into the economic reality of this time. And the second is, you got to always keep in mind, you may think you're the last word that the American people want, and you think, but well, so did Obama. And so did George Bush, and so did Bill Clinton. And the fact is, people turn pretty fast. Mm -hmm. So putting on your prognosticator's hat, what are going to be the big headlines that we're going to see coming out of Congress over the next six months? Um, theater. But the headline is going to be high drama as President and Congress confront each other. High drama as veto follows veto if necessary high drama, the Republicans take to the nation to say your will is being ignored. And so far as legislation, precious little, very little is going to come out of this Congress in this first six months. Gestures, highly stylized votes, as in repealing in the House the uh, whole health plan, and after that very little. Let's turn now to state politics. North Carolina is facing a projected $3.7 billion budget shortfall that the General Assembly will need to address in this long session. How do you put this budget shortfall into perspective, especially when you're talking to your students? Well, I tell them first, I don't want them to think that North Carolina has been uniquely feckless. We haven't. Across this country, the budget deficits, shortfalls are extraordinary. They're staggering. And they all arise from about the same deal. Uh, we thought it was going to be summer forever in one state after another. We passed programs which the people wanted and applauded. We set standards of investment uh, which seemed to be on the money when we were having that long economic period of at least high income growth. Now you wake up and you're California, you're New York, you're North Carolina, never thought we'd put North Carolina in the same category. And it turns out that uh, the kissing, as they used to say in Britain, had to stop. And there's no uh, way to maintain uh, with the current economy the kind of expenditures. But that's what I tell my kids first. It's everywhere. Second, don't believe anybody who tells you they've got an easy answer and don't believe there's no shared pain. But there are better answers than other ones. And one of the things you guys have got to do, or you students, is to work out for yourself what's the most logical places to cut as opposed to the cheapest politically to do. You have spent your career as a journalist in various uh, public policy roles nationally. 
Are there any models in other states or experiences from other states that North Carolina lawmakers can draw upon as they're making some of these decisions and, and weighing some of these economic priorities? Well, the first thing which will dawn on everybody, liberal or conservative, is it can't be all of one or all of the other. That is, it's all very good to say no tax increases, right, or we're going to tax cuts taxes, right, or we're going to do it all by slashing programs. But the only way that states have come out of this kind of horrible dilemma is to do a little bit of both, or a lot of both, depending. Uh, there cannot be a free ride for anybody uh, on this one. Now, every state has been different in one respect. Who is it that is the sacred cow? And there, North Carolina may be different considerably from a New York or a California or an Illinois or whatever. Now there are states that are not as bad off as we are. There are also states that have lousy public school systems and they have lousy higher education system and I just say that crudely. And they're not in deep economic difficulty. That's because they've never done anything as state government in the way that we think of as necessary and useful. Do you see any opportunities in this environment? Always, always if you will simply look on the bow as opposed to the stern, there are all kinds of ways that you could see making a slight change in course, uh, using this as an excuse to do stuff that was politically impossible uh, in the past, uh, getting control of uh, systems which everybody knows are out of control. And again, it's not just here, but uh, pension systems are simply out of control. I don't think New York State can walk away from theirs. I don't know how they're going to pay it out, however. And we have similar kinds of issues here. Someday we're going to have to deal with the fact that we're no longer a state in which every county can, in fact, expect to be treated equally. There are massively larger problems in some places from transportation on. And we're going to have to rethink. Oh, they're not going to, but we should rethink some of the formulas that we've imposed in better times. And what do you think that will mean for North Carolina and for the South as a whole? Well, look, North Carolina is either a leading light in the South or it's nothing. Uh, and we have been, in that respect, uh, rightly proud of what we added to the public good with smart state investments. I mean, I'm sitting in the middle of one of them right now out in the Research Triangle Park. I'm sitting in the middle of a university system. I would say there has to be an intense, will be, an intense rhetorical recommitment to some of this. And again, the trick for the people is going to be to say, what's really happening as opposed to rhetoric? Are they cutting bone? Are they cutting muscle? Are they cutting fat? And to be heard. Um, every group that comes into power, thanks to the empowered minority that got them there, uh, always thinks they've heard the voice of God. And what each group's got to be reminded is nothing is that clear. And the people, I have to be, to be reminded, need to be very, very clear in their reaction to what goes on. Hiding Carter, thank you thank so you. much for sharing your time and all your thoughts with us. Good being here. Thank you. Podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you who invite you to join them in supporting UNC-TV.